Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for checking out my channel. I really do appreciate it. On today's episode, I'm gonna give my first thoughts on which is the best tool watch from Rolex. The Rolex Mariner Date, the Rolex Explorer 40, or the Rolex Explorer 2. I've owned all these watches now for a pretty good amount of time. Here are my first thoughts. My name is Shane Walls and I make my living as a fine art nature photographer and explorer. I've come to truly depend on my tool watches when I'm out in the field. Whether it be timing my hikes or timing my camera exposures, tool watches are an intricate tool in my photography process. And these episodes on this channel are based on my amateur watch collecting journey as I search for that ultimate tool watch. For those of you who watch my videos, as I'm sure you've already noticed, the background's different on this video. We're doing a little bit remodeling, but we'll be back. We'll hopefully have a cooler background here in the near future. So here we go. Which is the best Rolex tool watch? And I know a lot of you are already asking, well, what about the Sea Dweller and the GMT, the Master 2? I felt with this trio, we're still somewhat covering those two watches in the way that the Submariner has the exact same movement as the Sea Dweller and the Rolex Explorer 2 has the exact same movement as the GMT Master 2. So if you're looking at it in that way, whatever one, they can just relate to those two watches for those watches that aren't appearing here. And as for the Daytona, I'm... it In definition, it is a tool watch, but I'm... I'm discounting that. One, it's almost, it's nearly impossible to get, as well as two, it's really not the best chronograph watch out there. There are a lot of other watches that are much superior to that. So we're sticking with these as for what is the best tool watch that Rolex makes. Now we're doing this to really test out these watches. I really wanna know how capable these watches are. Now, don't get me wrong. I do enjoy those videos with someone behind a desk telling me about that watch. Reading off a box though of its capabilities, I don't really go for that. Now I'm doing these testing not only for myself, it's also to do something different and really show, I don't see too many videos of really putting the watches to the test, what they're designed to do. I think this is good information to know. If you're not gonna wear your watch out in the field, if this watch can survive a frigid hike up to 15,000 foot peak, a two week backpacking trip, or scuba down to 30 meters, you know it'll survive a dip in the pool, weekend camping trip, or you driving to work with it every day. Over the next weeks and months, I will be putting these watches to the test. We're gonna first today talk about how they are and just kind of quote unquote everyday life, but we're gonna go from the beaches to the desert to the mountains and test these out as true tool watches, beat the hell out of them, really see which one comes out on top. Now we're gonna start, I know I just filled your head with all these grandeur of these great locations and places we're going, which we will get there. But let's start off with just kind of the everyday wearing of these watches. Now I'm currently exhibiting my artwork at the Festival of Arts Pageant of the Masters in Laguna Beach. It's a two month long art show. For the last 10 days, I've been switching these watches out as I go to the art show to talk about and explain my work. So it's pretty much me just going to the office. 12 hours on the wrist, 12 hours in my watch box. Now between the three of them, accuracy wise, there's not too much to separate them. They're all about a half second to a full second fast a day. Now the Submariner and the Explorer 2 are always just barely a little bit fast. It is interesting that the Explorer 40 kind of migrates back and forth. It's always about a half second off, but sometimes it's slow, sometimes it's fast. That's the only real minor difference, but they're all three of them are keeping extreme accuracy. All movements are very good with, again, more kind of the normal everyday wear and tear of a watch, going to the office, taking it off at night. I do have to say though, where one does slip ahead a little bit on this is the Rolex Explorer 40 in comfort. It is a little bit smaller size and that might make it a little bit more of a comfortable watch. The Explorer 40 is by far my most comfortable watch out of the three. Might be the sizing, but just the way it's set up, the thinness of it, it never catches on a jacket or a sleeve. It wears so well. So that does up its game a little bit out of the three. I do have to say though, 
the comfort of it, this is gonna be interesting because it is the most comfortable watch out of the three, but I prefer to actually wear the other two. If that makes sense, let's see if I can explain that. As tool watches, when I'm wearing a tool watch, I need to feel like it's a tool watch. And if I look at it and I'm just sitting watching a movie, I shouldn't be sitting watching a movie wearing a tool watch. I need to get up and do something. The Rolex Explorer 40 doesn't give me that feeling. These other two watches, the Submariner and the Explorer 2, do give me that feeling. With that heft and that real feel of a tool watch, makes me think when I have it on, I need to be doing something productive. Sitting watching a movie isn't really all that productive. We'll set up a scoring sheet in these later videos. I'll figure out, I'll have to think long and hard about how to score that, because it is, and I, I definitely need some more thought on that in the way that they're all very comfortable watches. Not, neither one of them is uncomfortable. And I would say out of all the watches I've really owned, these would be at the top comfort wise, especially for a metal bracelet. They're all relatively thin, so it's nice. I can wear all these watches in a suit as well as I can wear them out in the field. And that's really what's really in a way sets Rolex apart with their tool watches. They can be worn out in the jungle in just hospitable conditions, as well as with a suit at formal events. And that's what really drew my eye to these watches in the first place. As for going to the art show every night, it is nice that all three of these I can wear. I can, sometimes I'll go photograph, sometimes I'll go surf, and I don't always want to come home, but all these watches I can wear on my wrist without changing watches depending on changing events or situations, what I'm doing in the day. And these cover all that very well. Having a date function has become very useful and I am missing it just a tad on the Explorer 40. Doing the same thing day out and day in, the days blend together a bit. So it is always nice to be able to look at your watch and have that date function. If you're spilling out paperwork or something like that, it's just a quick, Look at your watch. So that the Explorer 40 is missing out a little bit on that, as well as to the Submariner. Speaking of timing things, the date. Rotating bezel is a big plus, and that I think this watch might come out on top of this video in the very early, early runnings of testing. Because that rotating bezel is so nice for timing things. And I'm one of those guys, you know this if you watch my videos. I hate having my cell phone on me all the time. I usually don't take it with me a lot of the time. Just leave it at the office and stuff. But it's so nice to time my prints and even just set a little reminder that, hey, when it hits this time, I need to get going. If I need to be somewhere at a certain time when I'm out surfing or something, I can set that bezel. And I know when the minute hand hits that, oh, it's time to go because it's going to take me 20 minutes to get from this point to that point. It is a nice little function. It takes a little bit off your brain. There's so much going on right now. Just the simple little things in life, I guess. So the Submariner goes into the lead, going into the next video, I think. The Rolex Explorer 2 with this epic white dial. In my personal opinion, I think it's the best looking of the trio. It might not be the most elegant. It might not have the best proportions, it just, it looks like a true tool watch with just a slight touch of elegance. I really love that about this watch. Explorer 40 is the most elegant. It does fit the best with the suit and it's been very nice to wear on these hotter days where I'm constantly suit on, suit off, or excuse me, jacket off, jacket on. That's been nice, but the Submariner has timing. So yeah. This is the start. These are my first thoughts. We got a lot more to come with this video, with these videos. We'll really set these out and I'm really looking forward to getting out in the field and really putting these, using these watches for what they were designed for, beating the hell out of them and seeing what comes out on top. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you like what you saw, please give us a thumbs up. It really does help out this channel as well as too, if you wanna keep up to date and see what happens with the testing of these watches, make sure to hit subscribe. It's summertime here. If you're in the Laguna Beach area, please come say hi to me. Talk art, talk watches at the Festival of Arts Pageant of the Masters in Laguna Beach. We're open till August 30th. Check out the website below for more information. Thank you again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.